it's my winter break and that means one thing that I have time lots of time what can I do with all this time read I don't know. It's actually not that much free time. One of the things I've decided to use with my time is since it's New Year's Eve, I want to experiment with a new recipe. Birria tacos. I've been wanting to make this for so long. I've gone to many restaurants around Nashville to try their birria tacos, and now it's time to try it myself. Step one of the process, salt the meat. If there's anything I've learned about like very important skills about cooking, it comes from this book. Salt, fat, acid, heat. They have a show on Netflix. You don't even have to read the book. But I already knew to add salt to food, but what I've learned from this is to salt your meat and salt it early. So that's the first thing I normally do is take the meat out, let it come up to room temperature a little bit, and salt it. This is what I'm cooking with today. At the top, we have beef short ribs. Right below that, I have some beef back ribs, and all the way under is chuck roast. So we got lots of meat here, probably about four to five pounds of meat. As the meat is salting, and that salt is just going in in that meat, I'm going to prep everything else, mise en place. Something you should know is that a lot of these ingredients are hard to find unless you go to a Mexican or Latino market. Anchos, ancho peppers, ancho entero, guajillo entero, if you can't find it in your regular grocery store, go to a Latino supermarket. It is recommended that you cut open the peppers and remove the seeds. This is where a lot of that heat is trapped. I did get most of them out and I did not have any problems with it being too spicy. One of the reasons I have been avoiding or pushing off making this recipe for so long is that there are so many ingredients. It hasn't taken a whole lot of time for prep, not as much as I thought. So let me show you what we got. All right, over here I prepped some yellow onion with garlic, red tomatoes. We've got our ancho and guajillo chilies. I've got some chipotles, apple cider vinegar. These are the ones I'm going to toast. So we've got the cumin, star anise, coriander, and cinnamon in here. Bay leaves because everything that's a stew needs bay leaf. And in this little spice mixture, I have the oregano. It's not Mexican, that's what they recommended, but we're just gonna go Italian today. All spice, cloves, and paprika. The first step of making the marinade is to toast the spices. I'm gonna give those a couple minutes to start toasting on their own. Once it's fragrant, I'm gonna add the onions and garlic. I'm gonna let those cook down a little bit together. Then I'm gonna add in the tomatoes. Meanwhile, I like to multitask while I'm cooking because browning the meat can take a really long time. So while I'm making the sauce, I'm going to be browning the short ribs and the rest of my meat. As the marinade, as the tomatoes, onions, and everything starts cooking down, I'm going to go ahead and add the chipotle pepper, the rest of the peppers, the spices, and the apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna mix those up and let that cook down together until everything is soft. Once everything is cooked down and soft, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it to the blender. Blend until it is all mixed well. Mine was a little bit chunky, so I added some water to it to help the blending process. That seemed to have worked. Once the sauce is ready, I'm gonna transfer all the meat back to the Dutch oven that I'm gonna cook it in, and I'm going to pour the sauce all over the meat, like so. And then I'm gonna add about six to eight cups of water. I basically just added enough water to cover the meat, as you can see here. Then you're gonna cook on a low to medium heat for about an hour and a half to two hours. You do wanna check on it and stir occasionally because the sauce can burn at the bottom. All right, we've been cooking for a while, so it is now time to start transferring this meat over. Now I'm gonna let it rest for a little bit and then we're gonna pull this apart. This step of the process is very important. You wanna strain the consomme before you eat it. So I went ahead and we strained this. This is gonna remove the thick parts of the sauce that you don't wanna drink. 
We are currently in the process of shredding the beef and heating up some more consomme. That's what it looks like. Here is the gunk that came out of the bottom of the rest. Happy New Year. Okay, a few things happened since I had to stop recording. It was getting late, it was dark. At that point, my boyfriend and I were just so hungry, so we just dug in. We had plenty of leftovers, so I'm gonna pick it up from where I left off yesterday. So some videos I watched actually talk about not eating the birria the first night, that it tastes better the second night, so I guess I'll be the judge of that. It's the next day, let's look. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. That is solid fat on top. I'm going to take most of that off to separate it for us to heat the tortillas with. Okay, here we are. I just pulled all the fat, most of it off the top here. So I put it in this little dish. I went ahead and put some in this pan because this is where I'm gonna heat up our meat. So I wanna make sure it's not sticking at all. Here's our meat, which is plenty fatty in itself. So we're gonna heat this up in here. And then this is for the tortillas. Something I did that I did not show in the video. So I added one to two cups of beef broth and that not only gave me more consomme to drink because this was definitely the best part, but it also just made it more enjoyable and less potent. Okay, now it's time to put everything together. Heat the pan and add the fat to start toasting the tortillas. I would say just go until you reach your desired crispness level. For me, that's pretty crunchy. As the tortillas are getting crispy, I'm gonna go ahead and add the meat to them. Then it's time to dress them up. Sprinkle roughly chopped cilantro, onions, and that spritz of lime juice. The birria taco is now complete and ready to consume. Some people like to do the quesabiria and add cheese to theirs. We are not big fans of cheese, so that is why there is no cheese involved in this process. But oh my word, it is so good. This is the best beer I've had in my life. It is so good. Oh my God. Final thoughts on the birria recipe. I haven't had a lot of birria. I've had birria probably like from four or five different places and that was the best birria I've ever had. Highly recommend trying out birria at home. It was great. Oh my God. It was so good. So good. All right, your turn. Mm -hmm.